everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic. It's Wednesday, so of course it's new comic book day. And I was a touch naughty today. The comic book addict in me just kept picking up books. It was a heavy week for me anyway, so... I don't know when I'm going to get the time to read all this. Um, the extra two books I picked up this week, there is a reason behind it and you will find that out later on in this video. But we're going to kick off with what was actually on my pull list, which starts off with issue 12 of Vertigo's Hinterkind. And this is their kind of Defy Covers month. Um, I thought this cover looked slightly odd when I was just looking through my pull list, what I had on there. And I thought this looks a really cool cover. But what they're doing is your story starts on the cover of the book. It doesn't start on the first page when you turn it over, which could be a cool idea. Um, as far as I know, it's only taking place in Vertigo. Hint of kind. I've always said this, this second story arc after their little hiatus away is miles better than the first. Um, so if you were thinking of jumping on, wait till this, because this story arc's almost finished. Pick it up in trade and then start picking it up in singles, because I think this has now finally got its stride. We just need to get rid of the artist. On to DC, Batman Eternal, issue 26. We're going away at a rare old pace here now. Uh, if the cover is anything to go by, and it's not always, we could be seeing the continuation of the end of the last issue where Batgirl, Red Robin and Jason Todd, Red Hood, whatever he's called now, uh, rescued Batman from the rubble of Bard's apartment that Hush exploded while he was in it. Um, so we'll see. Um, Batman Detective Comics issue 35 and it's a new creative team. I don't know if they're just fitting in at the moment for uh, Buccioletto and Manipole but uh, this came as a little bit of a surprise. Um, it's a new storyline from the cover. It looks like it's called Terminal so that should be interesting. And finally for DC, we have Swamp Thing, issue 35, Rise of the Machines. Charles Sewell has been kind of inserting these new avatars into the Swamp Thing universe. Uh, we originally started off with this kind of triad of avatars with the red, the green and the rot. Uh, but he's been adding... So there is no longer this idea that the, there is an imbalance between the three and there should always be a kind of harmonious level between them all, no one taking ascendance above the other. So we've already seen the kind of the, the fungus kind of avatar uh, in the Five Years Ahead Future Zen storyline. We had uh, a bacteria and there was a couple of others which have kind of slipped my memory now but we also have this machines world how long this idea will continue given that Charles Sewell is going exclusively over to Marvel I don't know I don't even know who the new creative team is going to be on this title but hopefully they will keep up with the great quality of storytelling that Charles Sewell has actually been doing in Swamp Thing um, on to Boom Studios, it's The Woods issue 6. So happy to have this being my first title that I've collected within Boom Studios Publishing House because it's right up my alley. It's a kind of sci-fi, aliens, um, a whole school kidnapped, it's adventure, it's like weird pyramids, crazy creatures, hieroglyphics, it's action packed the artwork has got better and better as it's gone along it's just a great fun read and you know the artwork is vibrant it's entertaining and it just suits the book down to the ground can't recommend that enough if you want something a little bit different um, on to image after a little bit of a hiatus we're back with alex and ada issue nine jonathan luna and sarah vaughan continuing their kind of future world where robots uh, are kind of commonplace 
and the um, we have we had at the end of the last issue before it went on a break um, Ada leaving Alex to um, go out into the world and I guess try and fend for herself. Uh, it's always been, and I'm guessing it always will be, a very slow burn of a read. This isn't an action-packed comic by any means. It's m very much a character piece. Um, it's kind of like the relationship between humans and robots uh, and artificial intelligence. Um, that artificial intelligence gaining sentience and of course their inevitability of taking over the world ah yeah issue two of the fade out is out this week great stuff the first issue um, of brew baker and phillips new crime noir series fatal was fantastic it had that little occult twist this is set in um, Hollywood of, I'm guessing, somewhere around the 1940s, so in its heyday, and we have uh, a murdered movie starlet on our hands. Um, great stuff. Really looking forward to reading the second part to that story. Oh, my goodness. Image. Again, it's Morning Glories, it's issue 41. The solicitations on this book is all over the place. Like, I don't have enough trouble trying to kind of review, give my thoughts and opinions on this title as it is. It's, um, you have to be reading this. You have to have read it from the start. I can't even tell you a good point to jump on on because I think you need to have read this from the beginning. Um, believe the trades are very cheap. I did read somewhere just recently, and I'm sure it was about this title, that Nick Spencer has in his head that this is going to go like a hundred issues. And I'm like, my God, how long is a hundred issues? Uh, well, let's see, 59 more issues going to take to come out, given its sporadic solicitations as it is. I'm going to be retiring before we get to a hundred. And um, finally for Image, Adam McGovern and Paolo Leonori's kind of Jack Kirby-esque homage, Night World, it's part three of four. Um, as I've said every time I've reviewed this, go pick this up. Make sure this is a huge seller. Let these creators know that you love their stuff because if the popularity and I guess the money is there when it really comes down to it. They will do more of this series and you will have that Night World Universe expanded um, and it's so worth it. This is just pure unadulterated good comic book fun. Pick it up. Now, those two new issues I bought this week, uh, anyone who's been watching me for a while lately knows that I don't pick up a lot of Marvel titles. In fact, I have one on my pull list, and that isn't really very good at the moment, which is Iron Fist. So, I mean, I used to be a huge Marvel boy. It used to dominate my pull list, but obviously... <clears throat> They've trickled away and I'm down to one book. So I really want to get back into Marvel. And this week is a perfect opportunity to get in at the ground floor because they had two new issue ones come out. You probably already know what these are, but I'll show you them anyway. It's Guardians 3000 issue one. This is the original Guardians of the Galaxy. This isn't the, oh, I'm so cool. I've got a Marvel film out that everybody thinks is great. No, this is the original team, written by Dan Abnett, so I reckon we're on for a good story. Uh, I had a flick through, looked at the artwork, looks good and fun, so you'll get my thoughts about that in the coming days. Finally, it's, do, 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 yes, it's female Thor. Now, I couldn't give a crap if Thor is male, female, black, white, an alien from another planet. There are only two things that I hope this book will do for me as a reader. One, that it is new reader friendly. Given that I've been away from Thor for quite a while, um, I don't want to go, well, thrown in at the deep end, don't know what's going on. And two, that they give a plausible reason 
why Thor is female. I'm fine with it being female, Thor being female, but as long as it's plausible, but, uh, then I can get on board with that. So, Thor, issue one, it's a female, so what? Let's try it out together. You're not going to know if it's any good until you read it. And they are my books this week. Um, if you do want to hear my thoughts, opinions, reviews on those books, and you're not subscribed to my channel and you don't want to miss out on that video, you have to hit that subscribe button. It comes out on a Friday, whenever, and uh, you'll get to hear about Female Thor and all the rest of those books I've picked up today. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it and in the comment section down below. Uh, let me Tell me what you think of my pull list this week. Did you pick up any of those books? Did you pick anything else up that I didn't that might be worth a shot? Let me know. So until Friday, have fun. Bye bye.